personal finance practice problem using OneNote cash value insurance payment calculation. Get ready to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. One note, you're not required to, but if you have access and would like to follow along, we're in the icon on the left-hand side. We're in the Practice Problems tab and the 8020 Cash Value Insurance Payment Calculation tab. Also, take a look at the Immersive Reader tool. The Practice Problems will be in the text area too with the same name, same number, but with transcripts. Transcripts that can be translated into multiple languages and either listened to or read in them. Focused in on calculating the actual cash value payment that might come from an insurance company if a covered event happens we're imagining that we have cash value insurance coverage as opposed to replacement cost for the coverage and we have furniture that is destroyed in a fire so we're going to imagine that it was covered under the cash value insurance coverage the furniture was five years old it costs to replace the furniture four thousand five hundred dollars the estimated life of it is going to be eight years the original cost what we paid for the furniture we're going to say is four thousand dollars so we're imagining the furniture has been destroyed you can imagine like a couch or something like that was destroyed how much are we going to get back from the insurance company if we're talking about the actual cash value as opposed to the replacement cost now remember if we had the replacement cost then we would be thinking about a higher level or quality of insurance because that would be giving us enough money to replace whatever the furniture was say it was a couch or something like that now clearly when we bought the couch it's going to go down in value typically because most stuff does so if we were to replace it even if we bought a comparable couch you would expect that it would be of a higher value even if the couches didn't go up in price and they probably do just due to inflation and so so you can't really say that the cost of the couch is, is per se the current value of the couch and if it was replacement cost then you've got inflation that could be in there as well so if we had the replacement cost then we might be getting simply the 4500 the higher value of the couch or the higher cost of the couch which is most likely higher due to in part inflation at this point in time if we've got the replacement cost then not only are we not really trying to take into consideration the inflation per se although we kind of take it into consideration with our calculation but we also have to realize that the fact that the couch has been deteriorated over time so at the point of the loss it's not really worth the replacement cost at that point in time because it's an old couch even if you buy a comparable one so if they give you the replacement cost we got to basically depreciate it in some way if you're familiar with depreciation in accounting, it's similar, but there's a little bit of a twist to it. So we're basically going to do a straight line kind of depreciation to try to determine how much they might pay us if it was the cash value uh, coverage. So we're going to say then down here in the calculation, we're going to start off with the cost to replace. This is the difference between this and say a strictly accounting method. If we were using a bookkeeping or accounting method, we typically start with the original cost. So that's going to be the difference. The reason we'd start with the original cost in accounting is because we're trying to take the cost of the furniture and or whatever, yeah, the furniture and allocate it over its useful life so that we expense the cost in the period that we consume it. Here, we're talking about the replacement cost, which is the cost to replace it at this point in time. So it's a little bit different of a of a an, an angle or what we're trying to do at this time and that's going to be the major difference between the two calculations so if you're used to accounting note that difference then we've got the estimated life is eight years so we've had it for five years but we're estimating that it could last for eight years where do you get that number you're probably gonna to have to talk to the insurance company they're gonna to have to estimate how long how long the useful life is going to be and then we're gonna divide that out so we're gonna take then the 4,500 divided by eight. That means it's gonna go down by about 563, 562.50 each year we would expect. It's been five years old. So I'm gonna take that times five years. That means it's gonna have decreased by the 2,813 by this point in time. So if we take that minus the original cost, 4,500, you would expect the cash value to be the 1,688. Clearly, the 1688 is substantially lower than we would have to buy a new couch. If it was a couch 
which would be the 4500 which we would have to come up with a difference out of pocket or we'd buy a very cheap couch at that point in time to replace it. So that's the difference between the replacement cost, which would give us the 4500 which would be great if we were insured with the replacement cost. But obviously, if it was insured under replacement cost, then the insurance premiums you would think would be higher. If you've got the cash value, you would think the insurance premiums would be lower. But if the event happens, then they're only going to give you the cash value. And then to get you back to the same point you were at with new stuff, you'd have to basically pay the difference. If you were using the accounting method, we would just simply start at the 4,000, the useful life still being the eight years. So 4,000, that's the cost rather than the replacement value divided by eight. That would be 500 per year. If five years had passed times, times five years, we would say that we had a decline in the value of the 2,500 and therefore we'd have the minus the 4,000 that would be the 1,500 left over. The difference between these two calculations being that starting point, the replacement cost for the insurance versus the accounting book value using the original uh, cost. You, could all, you can also think about this another way. So you might see it calculated if you're looking at people doing these calculations. If it was a straight line method like this, you could take the cost up top. We're back to the insurance calculation. You could do a similar thing with accounting if it were a straight line calculation. The ratio, you could just take the ratio and say, okay, well, I could say that it has an eight year useful life. We've had it for five years. So I could say eight minus five is three years. So there's three years remaining, which haven't been eaten up. It hasn't been depreciated to zero. It hasn't gone down to a value of zero yet. We have three years that we would expect that thing to still be living for divided by the total of eight years. There's our ratio, which would be 37.5%. And if I take the 37.5% times the 4,500, which is the replacement cost, we get the 1688. Uh, so we got the same calculation. If I did that same thing down here, same thing, except I start off with the 4,000. We've got the ratio of three to eight three years remaining compared to the useful life of eight years. There's the 3750. And then if I took that 3750.375 in decimal format times 4000, that would give us the 1500. So you can see it calculated in that format as well. So so bottom line here, we want to know if it's going to be the actual cash value or the replacement cost in the event that uh, that an insurable event happens. If it's going to be the cash value, then we're going to have to take that replacement cost instead of the original cost and then do our calculation to try to figure out what they're going to give us at that point in time, which will typically be less than what we would need to replace it. And so we got to keep that in mind when we when we're doing our planning.